can still remember a time when I used to hate my life, when getting out of bed every day was pain, not physical pain, but mental and emotional, and I suppose you could say spiritual pain. Going out into the world every day with this overwhelming feeling of hopelessness. I never knew my father growing up. He was gone before I was even born. But I did have a father figure, my mother's brother, my uncle. Uh, he was just like a dad to me. And I loved him like a dad. He used to live with us and not having any children of his own, I guess he, he sort of treated me like I was his son. And we had a relationship like that that was so close. He was such a sweet man. And when I was nine years old, he had a massive heart attack and died right in front of me. I was nine years old and had this dramatic, devastating encounter with death and the awful realization that life ends. And one day I will die and my life will end. So what is life all about? What's the point of it all? What's the meaning of it? What's the purpose for it? I didn't come from a religious family. There was no one in my family who went to church or read the Bible or who prayed and believed in God. So by the time I was a teenager, I had this emptiness on the inside of me, this feeling that something was missing. And I didn't know what it was. I didn't know how to find it, or even if I could find it. Because as I said, we didn't believe in God. We didn't believe in heaven or the afterlife. We didn't believe that there was anything bigger than us out there over everything. That was the real pain. That was the real agony, not just this aching emptiness on the inside of me but the conviction that there was nothing actually out there that could fill it, that could satisfy it. Always chasing and never catching. And the reason why you're never catching is because you don't believe the thing you're chasing even exists. But you chase just the same. You still chase because the pain is so great. But no matter where you go or who you meet or what you do or what you achieve, the pain never goes away. And so I lost myself in this world of nightclubs and binge drinking and drugs and chasing girls, just doing whatever I could to silence that screaming voice on the inside of me that was crying out for more. It worked for a while, but inevitably, the more time passed, uh, the less successful I was able to use alcohol to quiet and that aching on the inside. One day, just after I turned 20, I was sat in my garden in the evening and looking up at the sky just as the stars were coming out. I found myself saying something that was completely surprising to me given the background that I came from and the upbringing that I had. Because I said, God, if you're there, and I don't even know that you are, I don't even know if there is a God, maybe I'm just talking to myself, but if there is a God, if you're real, and if you're out there somewhere and you care about me even just a little bit, I can't live like this anymore. Please help me change this life. Let me tell you something. At that particular point, I wasn't thinking about churches. I couldn't care less about Bibles and hymns. I didn't want to know anything about Jesus. I wasn't interested in any of that stuff. I was just simply saying, God, if you're there, if there is some power out there that has some sort of influence in life. I need you to come and help me right now because I can't live like this anymore. About a year later, one night I was in the club and I was determined that I was going to put all of this misery behind me. I was just going to forget all about the, the problems and the troubles that I had. And I said, I'm going to get more drunk tonight than I've ever been in my life. I'm just going to cut loose and have the best time of my life. And something really strange happened that night. No matter how much I drank, I remained sober all night long. I mean, I drank pints of beer and I drank whiskey and vodka shot after shot and I was stone cold sober. I was looking at everybody else in this club for the first time through completely sober eyes. And I realized for the first time just how superficial and how shallow, how uh, fake that whole world was. And I began to despise that kind of life. And I said, I don't want to do anything to do with this anymore. I can't use this 
to mask or hide from what's really going on in the inside of me. Over the months that followed, I intensified my, I suppose you could call it my spiritual journey, looking into different forms of spirituality and asking that question over and over again, you know, God, if you're there, I need you to come and change my life because I can't live like this anymore. And I took some wrong turns and uh, some really, you know, dramatic things happened to me, which I talk about some of those things in my other videos. So uh, if you want to know more about those things, uh, the information is in the description below. But uh, it reached that point when in December of 2002, at about half past midnight one night, I was sat in the armchair in the house of some Christian people that I worked with against everything that I had grown up believing and contrary to everything that I thought was true, that night I gave my heart to Jesus. And when I did, the moment I called out to him, I knew that I had it. Everything that I had been looking for and longing for, I knew that I had it that night. That emptiness inside of me was filled instantly and it's been filled ever since that day and it was peace, and it's never gone away. Does that mean that my life is perfect? No. Does it mean that I don't have any problems? No. Uh, even today, there are times when it, it seems like my life wants to seem to come apart at the seams, but I have something now that I didn't have back then. A confidence that I am held by a power that is bigger than me, and that is bigger than anything else that's going on around me. It's love that wrapped itself around me that night. Love for me that wrapped itself around me that night and has never let me go. I don't know who I'm talking to. This video isn't like any of the other videos that I made, but I just felt like I need to share this with somebody. There's an emptiness on the inside of you that causes you to hate your life. You look in the mirror and you hate what you see. You hate the person who's looking back at you. You wish that you could be someone else, somewhere else. And yet deep down on the inside of you, there's this feeling that even if you were somewhere else, and even if you was someone else, that still wouldn't solve it because it's deeper than your face and it's deeper than your name and your address. There's a hollow, there's a something missing right down in your heart. And you're not sure that you can even find it no matter how long you search, that piece that's missing out of your life, it's there and you can find it. You're not going to find it anywhere in the things of life, but you can find it from the one who gave you and all of us life, and that's God. And some of you will be thinking, just like I did way back then, you know, I don't want to hear about God. I don't want to hear about churches and Bibles. And, you know, I don't know about this whole Jesus thing. I don't, I'm not too sure about that. And that's okay. If that's what you would say, honestly, that's fine. But let me ask you, let me challenge you. Can you start where I did? Can you start with that very simple prayer? God, I don't even know if you're real, but if you are, if you're out there somewhere and you care about me even just a bit, please help me change my life because I can't live like this anymore. If you wanna know more about my story, and some of the other things that I went through, as I said, look, just look down in the description below and you can find all of that information there. If you want to reach out to me, you can find me on Facebook, Evangelist Peter Hockley. I look forward to hearing from you. I don't know who you are. I don't know where you're watching this video, but I just want you to know that you are loved by someone who has a greater love than you could ever possibly imagine who has a gift of peace that is deeper and more lasting than you could ever conceive. Whoever you are, whether you're a Christian or not, no matter what you believe, don't let go. Don't give up. Please.